This session is about AWS Cloud9 service on AWS. It's an integrated development environment provided by AWS to seamlessly develop apps on AWS. We will talk a little theory about this service and then we will do a hands-on lab session on how to use this IDE. All right, let's get started. If you are a developer, you should already know what an IDE means. Be it any programming language, you definitely have an IDE, right? Now, famous ones are Eclipse, IntelliJ, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, etc. Now, each of these IDEs usually support one major programming language, and then you will have extensions for other programming languages. Example, Eclipse majorly supports Java, but it can also have extensions for JavaScript, HTML, etc. And similarly, Visual Studio majorly supports .NET, and you can have other extensions for Java or JavaScript, etc. And be it with any programming languages, you have to set up runtimes, right? Let's say for Java, you have to install and set up JDK or JRE. And for Node.js, you need to install Node and NPM. Now, what if you get an IDE which supports almost all major programming languages to code and gives you environment with all the major programming language runtimes pre-installed and you start coding right from the word go? This is what exactly Cloud9 provides. Not only these, Cloud9 also helps you seamlessly develop, debug, and run serverless applications using Lambdas, API gateways, etc. And it also integrates seamlessly with AWS CI CD tools and also with Git tools such as GitHub, Bitbucket, CodeCommit, etc. So you can easily build and deploy code. All right, let's jump onto the demo. Now this is the Cloud9 console. Let's go ahead and create an environment. And let's give it a name. And here is where we can choose the environment on which the IDE runs. You can choose to create an EC2 instance, or you can choose an existing EC2 instance, or even an on-premise instance. But if you choose an existing instance, make sure the EC2 instance or an on-prem server has a public IP address and can be reachable from internet for Cloud9 service IPs to access the instance. Let's create a new one for the demo. And you can choose the instance type from here. And then the platform, which could be Amazon Linux or Ubuntu. Now this setting is very helpful. Your instance gets auto hibernated when left idle. So you will not be charged when you're not using it. And under advanced, you can choose the VPC and subnet of your choice. But remember, make sure the subnet in which you want the instance to run has an internet gateway attached and a public or an elastic IP address attached to this instance. So since we're talking about the VPC, here are a set of criteria if you're spinning up the instance within your own VPC. By now you should be familiar with VPC and its components. So you can read through them. I will pause for a minute. All right, let's get back. I will leave this as default VPC and hit next step. Let's review the settings. Everything looks good and hit create environment. Now it's gonna take a few minutes to create the environment. So let's come back once it is ready. Okay, here it is, an IDE on cloud. No admin privileges to install IDE software on your laptop. No need to install runtimes. All you need is a browser and access to internet, and you can start writing the code from the word go. Just like an IDE, you can customize your preferences from here. You can format the code on save, or let's say auto save the code, etc. And you can also switch the themes from here. I personally like dark color, so I will switch back to dark color. And here you have the terminal, which is connected to the EC2 instance, which will have all the major runtimes pre-installed. Now these are the runtimes we have available on this environment. I'm sure you can find your programming language from this list. If not, you can add a new runtime from here. 
We also have Git installed, so you can check in, check out code just like any other IDE. We will see that in a bit. All right, let's quickly add a new file in here. I'll be creating a Python file. It's easy to write. All right, let me write a small code snippet to list all the buckets in my account. Import Boto3 and then S3 equal to Boto3.client and then it's S3 and then buckets equal to S3 dot list underscore buckets. That will give me all the buckets. Let's run a for loop with bucket in buckets and then let's print the bucket name. All right, let's run this code. You see, it picked up the Python runtime and executed this code. And you can see all the buckets in my account. Now, you might be wondering what AWS credentials are used to make this S3 list buckets request. I did not use any access key secret key in here. So how did I get back the bucket information? Now, Cloud9 comes with something called as AWS managed temporary credentials that can be managed from the preferences. And here's how AWS managed temporary credentials work whenever an EC2 environment tries to access an AWS service on behalf of an AWS entity, for example, an IAM user. Now, AWS Cloud9 continuously renews its temporary credentials so a single set of credentials can only be used for a limited time. This is an AWS security best practice, just like EC2 instance profiles we use on an EC2 instance. And Cloud9 also puts additional restrictions on how its temporary credentials can be used to access AWS actions and resources from the environment. This is also an AWS security best practice. AWS Cloud9 checks if the IAM user what we are using to run the environment has access or permissions to take the requested action, in this case, the list buckets. And if the permission doesn't exist, the request will fail. And similarly, Cloud9 will also check if the AWS managed temporary credentials has the permissions to take the requested action, which is again, the list objects. And if it doesn't, then the request will fail. So if both the AWS IAM user and the AWS managed temporary credentials allow the requested action, then only the request will succeed. If either AWS IAM user or the managed temporary credentials does not have access, the request will fail. All right, let's go back to the IDE. And another cool feature with Cloud9 IDE is that it's seamless integration with Lambda service. When we click on this AWS resources in here, it lists all the Lambda functions you have in your account. Let's try to import one function. Now, this is a Lambda function from our API Gateway lecture. Remember, it fetches all the users from DynamoDB. So once imported, the function gets added to your environment. Now you can start modifying the code from here and then run the Lambda function locally from here. So let's try to run this. And then we need to provide a test event in here. Although we are not using it in here, let's provide a test event. And then let's click on run. And there it is, result from our Lambda function, list of users from a DynamoDB table. And we can also create a Lambda function from here. So let's quickly do that. And let's provide a name. And let's choose the runtime as Python. And you can set up an API gateway trigger from here. I leave it as none for the demo. And from here, you can choose the role. Let me choose an existing role, which we're using for all the Lambda functions. Also, let's beef up the memory just in case. All right, let's create the Lambda function. And here it is, the Lambda function has been created within the environment. Let me quickly write some code. Same code we used to get the buckets in here. I have added few more lines just to return the bucket list from the Lambda function. All right, now let's test the function. Again, let's provide a sample event. We are not using it anyways in the function. And let's run it. And there is a result, list of buckets in my account. Now, since it's a Lambda function, 
In this case, it will be using roles temporary credentials to make requests to AWS resources, in this case, list buckets. So don't get confused between managed temporary credentials used by Cloud9 and the roles credentials. The managed credentials are only used if you're making a generic calls from this environment. But if you're using Lambda, the calls will be made using the role which you attach to this Lambda function. All right, now let's go back to the console and see if the Lambda function has been created. We have this Lambda function in here. This is the one which got created from our Cloud9. And if I go inside and navigate to see the code, hmm, we don't find the code in here, what we just wrote. Why? If you go back to the Cloud9 IDE, you can see our function is listed under local functions, not under Lambda function. So writing and saving the code in the IDE does not publish the code to the Lambda function yet. If you right click on this function, there it is. You can see an option called as deploy. Now this will push your code to the Lambda function. So let's do that. And let's go back to the console and refresh the page. And if we navigate down to the code, let's close this file and open it again. And there it is, our latest code. Now you could be thinking, you could have written the code directly in the Lambda function console itself. Why do we need Cloud9 for Lambdas? Now the real advantage of Cloud9 is that you can also integrate seamlessly with source code control systems such as GitHub, Bitbucket, CodeCommit, etc. So you can easily build and deploy serverless applications with CI CD tools integrated. Let's also see an example of Git quickly. If I type git hyphen hyphen version, there it is, git has already been installed. Now let's try to clone our code commit repo, the react.js app, which we have used in all our CI CD lectures. Let me quickly copy this and clone it on our Cloud9 environment. All right, it has been cloned onto the EC2 instance where our ID is running. If I do LS, you can see our repository has been listed in here. And from the left menu, you can see the repository as well. Let me quickly open a new terminal from here and quickly try to start the application and see if it works. All right, the app has been started, but it's running on port 8080. So let me quickly check if port 8080 is open on the EC2 instance security group. So let's quickly go to EC2. And this is the instance our ID is running on so far and we are running our Git and other commands on the terminal. And if we go to the security groups and to the inbound rules, now you can see port 22 is open only to these IP ranges. These are AWS IP ranges for Cloud9 service so that it can communicate with our instance. Remember not to change these rules. If you do, Cloud9 will not be able to reach your instance and the Cloud9 service will not work. Okay, port 8080 is not open. So let's add a new rule for port 8080 and to my IP address. Now let's grab the public IP address of this instance and access port 8080 on the browser. And there it is, our ABAP, which we have been using in our serverless and CI CD lectures. Okay, another important feature which is required in a typical IDE is debugging, right? Let's quickly see that on the Lambda function we created. And let's click on run. And if you see, there is an option to enable debugger here. And then if you click on run, now the code is running in debug mode. And then you can step in, step over, step out, all the typical debug functionalities. And you can also watch the variables from here. Okay, another unique feature provided by Cloud9 is interactive development. You can easily share and collaborate with other team members who are having an IAM user account. 
Now, if you click on collaborate in here, you can chat with your team members. And if you click on share in here, you can actually share the environment with other IAM users. Let me quickly share this with another IAM user. And you can toggle read access or read write access from here. All right, let's share this environment. Let's copy this link and let's access this in a private tab. And let me log in with the IAM user to whom we have shared the environment. And there it is. The environment on which we have been working so far have been shared with this IAM user. You can see all the users who are working on this on this right top corner. And under collaborate, you can now see there are two users and you can start sending messages across. And you can also visually see where other users are making changes and editing so that you will be aware of what is changing in the code. Let's add this comment from the demo user. And if we go back to the Wizlabs user, you can see the change is reflecting. Very intuitive, isn't it? All right, that's all for this session. Just remember, Cloud9 is a development environment provided by Amazon where you can develop, run, and debug your code. And you can easily integrate with Git, AWS CI CD tools, and seamlessly develop serverless applications on AWS. And do remember the VPC criteria if you're trying to run the Cloud9 on your own VPC. Hope you have enjoyed this lecture. Thanks for watching.